Hello and welcome to Bobbin Talk. So now I want to start creating the logo, the Chanel logo that's here on the lock. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a picture of this particular area and bring it into Clo. So it's just easier for me to look at it. So I'm just going to create a rectangular piece and I'm going to make it three by three inches. And let's just go to the 2D window. So I'm going to bring in picture as a graphic. So that's going to be this one. I'm going to place it right inside. Just move it a little bit so it's right in the middle so that'll be my reference for the logo you can start working as a pattern we're going to create an object let's come to an ellipse and you can also lock this so i'm going to lock this and then i'm going to utilize the shapes here so i'll just overlay the shapes on top of it as much as i can and it's kind of difficult to see because it is blue on blue it might be better to take a picture from the white handbag so let's do that we'll grab one of these and let me take a picture of this one i'm going to create one more pattern piece and see if that's actually better so i'm going to create a rectangle i'm going to lock this aspect ratio and put three for both of them and i'm going to bring the graphic again so i'll bring that place it right in the middle click ok and just adjust it and see if that will be easier for me to work with. I'm going to lock everything and I can trace on the blue one or on the white one, whatever's more comfortable for you. So I'm going to come into internal polygon line, shortcut G, and I'm going to simply trace the logo without this. I'll create a separate shape for this middle part. So you can trace it and create your curve lines by holding the command key on Mac, or you could also just create straight lines like this and then come back and create the curvy part of them. I'm going to do the curvy lines as much as I can, and I can take a look at it later and see if I need to balance the lines or adjust them in any way, shape or form. So this one, I'll have to come back and adjust it. Sometimes it's easier to just click. And it's good to get in the center of the line and just click there. That will create a more balanced, better curve. Now that we have the shape, you can see that wherever I click command, I created a nice curve. Wherever I didn't, I have the straight lines. No problem. We'll just come to the curve tool, edit curve, and we'll just grab every single curve and adjust to make it a perfect curve. And you have control over that. So just come and click on edit curve point. And then you'll get the two handles and just adjust your handles as needed. Just click on the point and grab the shoulder that you need to edit. Okay. And I have a couple more. So this one needs to become a curve. That looks good. This needs to become a curve. Until you highlight, it's a little difficult to see exactly what the line looks like. But this is one this is the other and that looks pretty good so whenever you're happy with the overall shape you can select the shape right click and clone as pattern and you'll get your pattern piece and you can put to the side next i'm going to create a hole in the middle and i'll place a separate pattern piece here because i want that to be thicker higher to stand out more so I'm going to cut out a hole in the middle where I'll be placing that piece. That looks about right. And I'm just going to center it. And I'm also noticing here that this is not perfectly balanced. I can adjust those points too. So this one, for example, I'm aligning it with the circle. And I'll do the same one for this one. So that looks a little better. And this can be also adjusted a little bit make sure all of the lines are selected and right click and just cut so now i have two separate pattern pieces and this will become my pattern piece here i can create a separate pattern piece or just slightly edit this one to match this shape and what you can do is you can also bring that piece here and see how exactly you need to edit it and you can grab a couple of points pull them out 
I'm just gonna pull it out on both sides until it matches my overall shape and that looks about right. I can change the curve a little bit and just make sure that it's matching perfectly. And keep in mind that this looks very angular because we're at a high particle distance. So that will become my closure. And all I need to do now is give thickness to these two pattern pieces. And for that, we're gonna select both of them up on object browser, property editor. So from fabric mat, I'm gonna change this to, I can change it to metal and come down to simulation. And under additional thickness rendering, you can add thickness. Create the same for all pattern pieces, add thickness, and then take a look in the 3D window. Make sure that you're under thick texture surface and you can see the thickness here. And here we need to be thicker, so we'll give it more thickness. And for this one, we'll select for rendering. Let's give it five, for example, and see what that looks like. And you can see that it's starting to come out, but we need a lot more. So I'm gonna go up to 10. You can also play with the angles and make sure that they're not so rounded. And we're gonna come to curvature and that gave us more sharp angles here, less roundness. And again, this is pretty angular right now because we are under 20 particle distance. Once we change the particle distance to be 10 or even five, we'll have a lot more detail visible. So let's go to simulation properties and change the particle distance to a lower number. Let's go down to five and see what this looks like. So we got a much smoother angles here. Make sure that we do it for both patterns. And you can go even lower if your computer can handle it. And we'll see that we have this much better, smoother curves up here. Next, let's change the color. Make sure that the fabric is selected. Come down to color and let's select a bluish purplish color. So it was more of a purple hue. Maybe this shade will be good. We can adjust that later. So that's good. And also this is metal right now and that looks somewhat shiny. You can also play with the roughness the reflection intensity. I like the intensity to be maybe at a hundred so we can see as much as we can. The metalness here is also a hundred and that will make it shiniest. And you can include some kind of a metalness map if you'd like to create one and make this whatever you desire it to be. So play around with the settings here. And now we're ready to export this as an object. I really need to get rid of all the other objects because whatever you have here will become part of the object. Delete these and we have just these two. And now we can go to file, export as an object. And I'm gonna call it Chanel logo lock. You can call it whatever you like. And I'm putting it in a folder that I already have. It's going to appear in the library. So let's save that. And here I want all patterns, single object. I'm going to choose this to be thick. Scale in millimeters is fine. And this is fine too. Click OK. And then let's see if it will appear here in my library. I saved the file under hardware and trims to be called Chanel logo. And let's apply this to the bag. Next, I have opened up the file with my bag with the chain that we did. And I'm gonna bring in the Chanel logo as the object file that we created for it. So I'm gonna go to library. I've created a folder under hardware and trims called my hardware. And that's where I'm storing all of my hardware. You can organize it however you like. Here I have it under Chanel logo lock and I'm gonna add that to workspace. So I have a couple of different choices here. I can bring it as an avatar and as an avatar, it will be solid and the materials will interact with it. But if I move the bag, it will not move. It will stay where it is. So I would rather bring it as a trim. This way I will have the capability to attach it exactly to the place that I want and it will stay there if I move the bag. So I'm going to click OK. I'm also going to close the library so we can see here everything better. And I'm going to go just to 3D window so we can see it's up here. So I'm just going to move it right in front so we have it a little bit closer. When it comes as a trim, you have the little glue bottle here. It's blue and it's glue. So the glue blue bottle, left click on it. And now the logo is in your hand and you can attach it anywhere you want. So I'm gonna come really close and make sure that I place it kind of in the middle of the tab here. And obviously we need to change the scale. So I'm gonna click right here on the gizmo to get the pulleys. And I'm gonna shrink it a little bit just to get it to the right proportions. And you can also increase the thickness of it if you want it. So you can make this 
a bit in or out and when you're happy with the size of it just click back on the gizmo and we can bring it in inspect if you're happy with the position i'm gonna rotate a little bit maybe bring it a little bit closer and that's where it is right now so obviously the color is not perfect we should have been matching this particular color here another trick here would be also if you're gonna stay with this chain then you could cut out the picture of the logo and place that as a drape on top of this one here just stitch it on at least that way you will have matching colors in the hardware this is what we have right now with the trim and if i click simulate you will see it moving with the tab so for next part of the video we can explore how to create the chain here through the same process with creating an object exporting it and then bringing it in subscribe to bobby talk for more videos and to watch the next part